And now it's time for the latest exciting episode of Doz's Television Workshop. Hello and welcome back to Doz's Television Workshop where today we're going to be having a look at this Panasonic Quintrix TC381G portable colour television set. Let's get into it. Right, here it is. Um, yeah, it's uh, come out of a very damp garage, I think. We've got some choice moulderation going on on the mains lead. Um, I think it's a sort of 80s set. It's got an AV channel look specifically for a video recorder. So I wouldn't mind guessing it's uh, probably 80s. But it'd been a slightly earlier one. I'd have been tempted just to plug it in and switch it on. It has, however, got on the handle here, the National logo. Uh, from when National became National Panasonic and dropped the National altogether in the end. Um, but there we are. Um, I am half tempted to just plug it in. I don't know much about these sets, I have to be honest. We didn't see many of them back in the day. And that's probably because uh, they were either extremely reliable or we didn't have a Panasonic dealer locally, which I suspect might be the case, actually, uh, especially in the early 80s when these were sort of being sold. Um, proudly says made in Japan on the back. Um, yeah, I did get caught a couple of times with nasty decoder faults on these where the colour wasn't right. Focus pot, picture sharpness, that's interesting. Service switch, aerial socket of course. What's that? Vertical hold on the back. Uh, on the front we've just got the usual colour brightness, etc. Um, I'm going to need my favourite screwdriver to take this one apart. You can see there's uh, some choice detritus in the rear here, but uh, hey, I am just going to fetch the back off, just have a cursory inspection, and probably attempt to reform the mains capacitor. I might want to gently bring it up on the variac as well. Uh, two screws there, there's a couple here. Serial number is EG9430484. Does that mean 84, do we think? I wonder if we've got any dates on the inside we can look at. Right. Are those the only screws we have? It appears so. Oh, we've got a sticker on the side as well. What does that say? Full service contract televisions and video. Television and video services. 855 Wimborne Road. More down. There you go. Well, you can just give me a ring. <laughs> and this is being stubborn. What have I forgotten? One, two... Three, four, any screws along the bottom? No, but it's got like a section. Of... Oh, it's going to come on. There we are. There we go. Oh, look at that. Ah, we have the dreaded captive aerial socket. I shall just relieve that from the tuner. Oh, it doesn't look to have been... All the wire tank, wire wrapping things are still in place. It's got that wonderful smell of... Uh, the 80s coming out of it. That's it. I'll just put that down there. Now it's important to note that's an isolated aerial socket um, because it's a live chassis set, which means it has a switch mode power supply in it, which it does indeed. Right. Do I want to do some preemptive work around there before we give it the beans? Line transform mode is one of these, can you see that there? It's one of these sort of bulbous affairs that Panasonic were a bit keen on at one stage. I don't, uh, I don't ever remember them being unreliable. Um, one thing worries me. Does that seem to be bent out? Or is that just me? Right, let's get the chassis out 
I'll just have a look, just in case it's been dropped or something. I'm going to pop this down on its front. How's the chassis come out? Does it just slide out? Ah, yes, I remember this now. Flooding back, you see, I must have seen a few of these. Because I remember you have to do this. Either which way, I can see round the bottom of the line output trans transformer. What I was worried was if it's been dropped, transformer's quite heavy component and it can snap off the board and really spoil your day. You see a lot of television sets that people post. I mean, why would you try and post a TV set? I have no idea. Ta-da! Wings come out like that and the whole thing slides out, if memory serves. Into a sort of pseudo servicing position. There we go. Doesn't seem very keen. Let's just snick the tube base off for a moment. There we go. Yeah, I do wonder whether we ought to have a, a brief look at some of those capacitors because if I blow either of these transistors on the side here, we will be in a world of pain. Uh, what have we got? 2SC 1875 horizontal output transistor. Oh, and the same for this chopper. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Although I have to say, the switch mode does look very, very simple. Let me just undo that cable to the tie there. That might give us a bit more room. I don't think this has ever been a part. I wonder if the TV servicing company just had the pleasure of supplying it back in the day. <laughs> I'm just going to pop it back on its front again, I think. It's probably easier than messing with that for a moment. What CRT type have we got? We've got a 320 BTB22, uh, 320 AX822 replaceable, apparently. Joints around the bottom of the transformer look good. Where's the line drive transformer? Just have a look at that. That's under there. See if that looks dry jointed at all. It doesn't. Should we just switch it on? Uh, it is Japanese. Let's just throw caution to the wind, shall we? And switch on. I'm going to do it by the variac. I'm not that brave. Um, right, so what do we got? Let's just turn the variac down. Lamp limiter as well, do we think? Well, it's there, isn't it? Uh, where's the output from the lamp limiter? It's here. Let's save ourselves from catastrophe. Uh, so, variax on zero, mains is on. We shall have a shader volume so we can hear it. Obviously, it's a fully semiconductor set. The only bit that's got to warm up is the tube itself. So, yeah, here we go. Right, place your bets. Turn the light down a bit. Right. There we go. That is... It's 100 volts. Not drawing much in the way of current. Hmm. Oh, our lamp is dimming down though. Probably as the mains capacitor reforms itself. I should have had a camera on the lamp really, shouldn't I? Oh, I can hear whistling.
something's trying. Right, there's 150 volts. You can hear that on the camera. That's 200 volts. We are glowing quite brightly over here. I wonder if our lamp is just limiting too many volts. Let's bring the lamp out and see what happens. Whoa. Strong whistle. Doesn't sound very happy at that. Well, that's at full, well, that's 200 volts. And we have a lot of smoke. Right, well, we need to investigate that, won't we? Good, because if it had just come up and run, it would have been a very short video, wouldn't it? <laughs> right, where was that smoke coming from? It was around the power supply somewhere. Perhaps one of our capacitors has let go. So let me just fold the legs out and see if one was getting hot. Oh. That one's sort of shot itself off the board, I think. Right, well that's where we're going to start. Let's go and investigate down there and see what's happening. Right. Right, well I've got the chassis into a sort of more workable position and the area to which we saw smoke coming out was down here. And this capacitor here, if I move my head out of the way, it's very wobbly. It doesn't feel like it's actually fitted, so I wonder if it's coming away. I think it's C531 there. So um, let's just get a, a dab of fresh solder on it and um, fetch it out and see what it looks like. <laughs> As suspected, it's only got one leg. <laughs> right, fault number one, instantly diagnosed, a uh, uh, very open circuit capacitor, clearly. Open circuit because it's only got one leg. I'm going to make the Peter Cook and Dudley Moore joke at this point. Probably not politically correct. The problem is the other leg has rotted off in the board. Hmm. Let's see if I can fetch it out this way. And that is, I think, it's coming straight off the switch mode transformer. Straight via a diode. I think that's our main HT smoothing capacitor. Yeah, 10 mic at 250 volts, so uh, yeah, chances are good, aren't they? Uh, 10 mic at 250. Not in that box we won't have. We might have something in this box, however. 10 mic and the cupboard is bare. Oh no. Hundred mic and a hundred volts. That won't do it. Ten mic, three fifty. What are they doing in there? Twenty-two mic at three fifty. Somebody's had a party in my box. Ten mic, four fifty, and it's radial. So that's that's more like it. Right, problem number one, perhaps solved. I might just be tempted to take that one out that's next to it as well. Right, now which side's positive? Positive end is towards that side because it's coming off the top of the diode and it's a positive rail, so that looks good. Excuse me. 
There is a very large capacitor just to the left of it that is perhaps bothering me. Right, there we are. It's got that replaced. Snick the legs off. There's a little, another little one next to it, and it's one of those purple ones. And I think we'd best be having him out as well. C651. He's got a very shrunk jacket as well. So I think while we're in there, let's just pull that one out and check its condition. Although, looking at it, I think this is a coming off the line stage. Probably a line derived supply for something. Come on, out you come. Oh, there we are. Is that a sign of corrosion around the bottom of its pin? Shall we measure it anyway? 2.2 mic, 160 volts. Could have measured it in circuit really, or attempted to. Two point four five microfarads at one point five nine ohms. I think he can go back in for the time being. Oh no, which way round was it? Is there a legend on the board? There is. Is it clear? No. <laughs> Let me compare it with another one. So the negative end is marked with a big stripe. So let me see if I can blow some of this dust off in here. Ah! <sighs> Wondering why I can't see a stripe on it. This is quite a rare thing. We see them every now and again. They aren't very good normally. That, if you can see on there, I shall hold it up to the big camera, look. You see that? It says BP Bipolar. It's a non-polarised electrolytic. It'll go in either way around. And they generally do have a little bit higher ESR than the usual anyway. So, yeah, he's bipolar. So, that can go any which way around it likes. That's that back in. Now, 220 microfarads at 160 volts just next door to it. Just make sure it didn't manage to accrue any charge while we were on. Don't suppose it did. No, that's very sad. So that's okay. Not charged up. If I could just safely test for it. Two hundred and fifty-four microfarads, point one nine of an ohm, and we wanted two hundred and two twenty, so that's well fine. Whoa. So was it just that? Should we try it again? Right, where's my plug? We shall bring it up to 100 volts and then increase from there. I'm just going to switch the desoldering station off because it makes a row. Right, are we ready? We're ready. It does sound like something's under load. Anything on the screen? Nothing at all. And we've got smoke again. Where's that coming from? It is coming from that large resistor there. 24.5k. All right, let me just put my finger on that, see if I burn myself. If 
Yep, he's red hot. So what does that supply? Hmm, looks like the line stage to me. So let's have a little zoom in so you can see. Uh, I'll take the tube base off because it's sort of obscuring the view somewhat. That big sort of teal fella there, red hot. Um, and we have a cutout next to it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, that sort of cutout towards the one end. That's a bit of high voltage isolation. That that's hot as well, but that's I'd have thought that was meant to be getting old. Right now we have no schematic, and I just did a quick Google. And I can't see one online. I know somebody that might have one. Your very own Michael Dranfield, because he's got a book for everything. Um, so we may end up contacting him and asking him, but uh, let's see if we can't work it all out first. So what is that resistor that is going? Uh, hmm. Where? It's that fella there, I think. Next to pin three of the line stage, next to pin three of the line stage, that's it. So it's going between, I think it says TP. Interesting enough, it is coupled into that bipolar capacitor. What's that? S4159, S561. Ah, now that's a glow tube. So that's like a neon lamp. And if the power supply voltage rises up too high, the neon light strikes and it's a sort of over voltage protection circuit. So have we got excessive voltage? Possible. Right. In which case, do we start having a look around at the switched mode power supply? Uh, so we've got all of that in there. There is, you can see that on the board there, it says B plus adjust. So that's our sort of main HT rail. <laughs> that diode doesn't look very healthy, does it? Let's just touch that up while we're here. It might just be dust around it. Certainly better now. Where does that go to? Now that actually, that actually is the scan coils there. So, yeah, I could have problem in the output stage, loading the power supply down. We could have all sorts of problems. So, where to next, one wonders. This is when you could really do with a schematic. There's a diode down there, I can see, just off the side of the line output transformer. There's also another little capacitor in the front of the power supply there. He doesn't feel like he's got a leg missing, so that's something. What we really need to know is what does that supply? Oh, there's a wire link here in red, which I saw on the bottom of the board, that follows that back round right down by that diode. I wonder if that diode's okay. Shall we have a look? Uh, meter to diode test. Lovely. All right, that way. What's the bet? And it's fine. Oh, it's open. Oh no, there it goes. It's just tarnished to hell where it's been stored in a suboptimal environment. Let's just go back the other way. He's fine. There's another one down there coming off the line stage, right in the same sort of vicinity. So why wouldn't we just check that? Oh, it's got a bit of an odd voltage across one way. It's fine the other way, probably just measuring the winding. Okay. Worst case scenario is we have a defective line output transistor for some reason. Um, and we can prove that. But do we need to at this juncture? Hmm. Ah, there's an RU2 there. What's that measure like? OK. 
right. RU2 is a high speed diode, quite common in power supplies, and I've got an absolute drawer of them over there. I bought a big bag full of them years ago because they were really useful diodes to have, and I, one of our suppliers had them for not a great deal of money. So I bought a big bag of them in the 90s. <laughs> right. So, what's the next thing to do? To get the test the transistor, I really need to take one leg off. And, ah, oh, what's that? And now that's where the output transistor goes, there. All the way across the chassis on a bit of lead, look. Is that it? No, it isn't. Yeah, you wouldn't expect that. Although there is the line output and frame output scan coils. Hmm, they haven't made this easy for me, have they? I'm wondering if we can just get that nut off the end of there and uh, see what transpires. Uh, where are those little pliers? That'll do for now. So the collector of this transistor is on this, sort of on a tag around the back of here. You can't really see that, so I'm just going to Pop my finger on it, undo it. Okay, nut and a washer. Just going to see if I can squeeze that tag out. Unless they've made it easy for me to remove that heat sink, which they may well have done actually. Looking at it, I think it's only four screws and I can take the heat sink out of the way. But let's just pull that out of there for now. short in there and I've dropped the insulator. Let's just see if we can lower this heat sink down somehow just to gain a bit of access. Right, well that's uh, managed to gain access to that a bit better. There's the insulator for the back of my transistor. Okay, let's see if that transistor has expired. Oh dear. I think we're probably just measuring the um, uh, line drive transformer there. Yeah, no, he's fine. Yep. Yes, indeedy. Good. Okay. Right. Now. It still could be something in the line stage loading the power supply down. So I'm just going to reconnect this base wire back on this transistor. Everything seems in good condition around the transformer. There's no cracks in it or anything, so that's encouraging. Now this red lead here is the collector. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to leave it disconnected and I'm going to find a load to go in there and then switch the set on. Obviously it won't work, but if it drives the load, we know the power supply is operating all right. If it doesn't drive the load, there's something else afoot. So I need a light bulb. I've got a box of light bulbs somewhere, haven't I? Uh, bear with me one moment. Okay, I've got a bit of a bit of a 40 watt bulb with a couple of bits of wire on it. Ordinary incandescent bulb. 
uh, I'm just going to connect one end of it to the chassis for ground. On the other end, I am going to connect to that red lead that came off the connector, collector of our transistor. And I'm now going to power it back on again. So if the lamp lights up and glows, our power supply is supplying power. Um, if it doesn't, we've got a fault elsewhere, um, or it may not like the load. It's not an exact science. Um, some power supplies will run quite happily without a load on them, and you can just disconnect the line stage and then measure the voltage. Not so sure about this one, only one way to find out. So yeah, let us switch on, I'm on zero over there. Power is going on. Okay, well, our switch mode power supply looks to be okay. So we do in fact have a fault in our line stage. So yeah, let's pick our way through that. I'm hoping the output transformer isn't duff, because if it is, I'm not going to ever see another one. Um, right, let's uh, stop there because it's getting quite late and uh, I'm going to sleep on this overnight and I'll see you all tomorrow. Okay, it's the following day. I've slept on things a little bit. Um, what I'm planning to do is remove that uh, line output transistor and just put it on the component analyzer just to prove it's still doing something uh, that it should be. Um, I suspect it will be all right, but uh, I've been proved wrong before, so that's not a problem. And if that has failed, we need to know why it's failed, really, before I risk another one in there. I haven't got, what is it, a 2S, 2SC 1875. Um, don't have one, uh, but I do have some BU2AAs, which I think will probably do the job. But um, I don't want to just put another one in switch on and hope for the best, because um, if, say, the line output transformer has failed, that's a flyback if you're in the States, if that has failed, um, I don't want to risk it uh, killing another transistor, really, because uh, I don't have millions of them, so, yeah. Right, um, so that's the plan. I just need to take a couple of photographs of stuff. Um, so let's just uh, just so I can wire the transistor back up the right way later on. And I've got to mention this this line output transformer. If you look at it from above, you can see that it's almost the same as a tri uh, as a transformer with an inbuilt tripler. And I think that's probably what it is. I don't think it's like a split diode arrangement, um, but that shouldn't bother us much. So uh, first thing to do is to get that uh, transistor out. So that's not going to be too tricky, I don't think. There it is. So you can see the thermal grease has uh, dried out a bit on there. but. Uh, we shall renew that before we put it back in, if it's all right. Yuck. Right, let's get the DCA on there and see what it says about this transistor. Right, test. NPN silicon transistor. Current gain, not a lot, which is what we'd expect. Okay, good, right. That means our output transistor is good. So we have a fault elsewhere. Okay, so sadly, I think the next thing to do is to remove the output transformer from the set. So just get the EHT cap off. Uh, this hasn't been on in many years, so it ain't going to be charged up. Right, let's get that transformer out. <laughs>
that's got it off the board. You can see here um, that uh, Panasonic and a number of other quality manufacturers uh, actually put rivets in the board and that makes our job a little bit harder to get the transformer out. But uh, there it is. I'm going to disconnect these three leads from here. Green at the bottom, black, uh, yeah, red in the middle, black at the top. Those provide our focus voltages. Um, and there it is. So that's good, it's filthy. So let's just clean it up a little bit. Give it a bit of a birthday and just inspect it for sort of cracks or anything like that. I can't see visibly anything wrong with it. There is a gargantuan diode down here, which I think is sort of the uh, free running diode across the transformer. So I'm just gonna check that for a short. It's okay that way. Yeah, it's okay. This one I was questioning earlier. Absolutely fine. What else we got down there? Where's my little brush gone? Any of these sort of, there'll be a couple of power supplies derived from the line stage generally. I just want to make sure they are intact because anything loading that line stage down will put a horrendous load on the power supply, which is what it sounds like. And they are all fine and dandy, which is good news. Right, so I think the next thing to do is work out where our power supply comes into our line output transformer. So the generally the line output transformer has a winding, you've got HT or a B plus in this case at one end, then a winding, then it's the transistor switching at the bottom, which is why when you disconnect the collector, um, whilst the winding is still in, nothing is, uh, no current is able to flow. Right, so if that's the case, we shouldn't see a load on the power supply. So I'm just gonna work out where our power supply rectifier diode is. I'm just, I should have done this before I took the transformer out really, but hey. Okay. So our power supply is down here. That's our big sort of capacitor. That's our glow lamp. That's that capacitor that failed. So I'm thinking, what do we got across there? Many kilo ohms. And I want to see where our, ah, I need to see where that HT comes in. So that's it there. That's it there. Where's its rectifier? Ah, I think that gives it away. Is ground this side, yeah. So this side is HT. So that should end up feeding the transformer somewhere. So let's just have a little look. Uh, that goes down there, across a wire link, around there into pin four. Sure enough, so pin four is our HT input. Also goes up here, yeah, for the line drive, I suspect. Yeah, it's a line drive transformer. So we need to look at pin four on our output transformer, but we know it's gonna be all right to ground. Where is the transformer grounded is our next thing. Ah, where's our collector connect? So let me find that wire. It's that red fella there with a the tag on it. Um, which I'm guessing, I don't know where it is. Let's just poke about, find out where our collector connects. There it is, it's pin one. So HT comes in on pin four, transistor connects on pin one. And why is this important? Because I'm going to use an ancient piece of equipment that I haven't used in a million years 
to test this transformer. So I have an HR line output trans transformer tester. Um, and we're going to need to hook it up to that pin there. Two is missing, three, four, and to pin four, so we can energize the primary of our transformer and actually measure what comes out of the EHT cap. So let's put this all to one side and go and get that bit of kit out. Complete with bits of spider. This is the HR SVT DST01 TV simulator for diode split flyback transformers. Diode split. This isn't diode split, but what this does, let's get it out of the box. Oh dear, bless it. Covered in crap. European plug, which uses a death adapter for that. We've got some leads, so that's good. We've got um, it's just some printouts. It originally came with a CD, uh, which is long since gone. Um, so there we have it, the line transformer testing piece of kit. So ground, ah, I didn't measure our ground. I did it off camera. It's actually on pin six. Our collector, uh, which is uh, pin one, and that is our HT supply, which is in pin four. So let me just undo this lead. Uh, it's got a switch on the side, it says 90 or 110 degree deflection. Yep, so uh, right, grind, which is going to be pin six. Collector, which is pin one. Uh, HT, which is pin six. And then what you do is you get your anno cap and you squish it under that tangy thing there. And it should give you an indication in kilovolts of the output. Now, I don't think it actually generates kilovolts. I think it's sort of a turns winding type arrangement. Uh, we've got a 90 degree set. That's set for 90 degrees. Not that it make much in the way of difference. Uh, let's use a death adapter. Plug it in and see what occurs. Not a fat lot. Ah. This adapter is not doing us any favours here. Two hundred kilovolts. <laughs> that ain't right, is it? Um, well, I can't see that producing two hundred kilovolts. To be quite frank, um, what have I got wrong here? <laughs> Five minutes later. Right, after some not inconsiderable messing around involving the scope and EHT probe and all sorts of bits and pieces, I've turned out that the earthy end of our EHT winding is is isolated from that. Obviously that just references the pot, uh, the stack in there. This is actually our ground. So I have a ground to pin six, our HT going to pin four, collector is connected to pin one, and this end one here is the actual EHT ground. And if I plug it in, uh, it thinks about it for a while. The red light goes out, that's the important bit. And we have 23.1 kilovolts. Uh, it's not really kilovolts, it's quite a low voltage actually. Um, and on this pin here that you can just see on there, if I scope, I get lots of lovely pulses, which I should be. So I think our transformer's good making EHT. Yeah, I don't see it's a fault with that, which is sort of good really, but it does mean we've got another fault somewhere. So back to the set. Right, I was just uh, cleaning the transformer up before I put it in and I have noticed there is the tiniest little split down the side of the focus assembly here. Now, I don't think that's going to do, stop our set from running. However, it wants attending before it gets any worse. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean this up with a bit of IPA. Uh, 
and seal that up with some araldite. Our EHT comes out before that. So we've either got, uh, it comes off the bottom of the rectifier maybe, or maybe it's a, a, a sort of resistive divider VDR sort of thing. Um, I don't know because we have no data. So I'm just gonna, I, I, I think this is probably, I don't know, it could be EHT, but I don't think it is. I think it's more likely to be down at sort of six or 7,000 volts. So um, whilst it's still got enough to leap out, I don't think that damage is severe enough yet, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna put uh, some araldite across that crack, if I've got any. It's just a two-part epoxy. In fact, I don't have araldite. But we do have RS Pro um, two-part epoxy, so I'm just going to mix a bit of that up and daub it over that crack. I think it sort of goes around there. You can see where the, the case stress of that corner has sort of spread out, I think. Um, right, I need a bit of cardboard or something to mix this up on. Bear with me. Ah. Just the job. Right, that's that. Let's uh, leave that to dry and get on with diagnosing other possible faults with our chassis. Right, back at the chassis. Um, I've just confirmed all the diodes in that sort of area aren't short. And um, there is one hidden underneath that resistor that was getting very hot. I just want to confirm what that resistor actually does. It's also, oh, it's not marked up, TP9 is next to it. But um, I just want to see what that feeds. Because it might give us a bit of a clue, perhaps. Um, so it's that resistor that is going between, let me get this right. just above TP9 in the middle of that cutout. So it's that one there. And oh, it feeds a lead, which doesn't help. That goes off to N. So let's just find out where that's ending up. It's R564. Feeds a lead, which goes to N, which goes to pin eight. Now that's a worry because pin eight is sort of our EHT earthy end. So I suspect this is done for x-ray protection maybe. So if you measure the voltage drop across that resistor, um, if that voltage, let me get this right, uh, yeah it'll give you an indication of EHT current, beam current, so it might be a beam limiter um, or something similar. There is a diode in there. Let me just confirm that's all right. So, uh, meter to diode, I shall put you there so you can see. Meter to diode. Okay, let's just confirm that is okay. There's a diode between pin 8 and whatever that is. It looks okay to me. Yep, certainly isn't short. There's also this big diode across here which I measured previously. Yeah, he's fine. Bit of a quandary, isn't it? Well, this big capacitor here, um, it is entirely possible that that has failed short. Um, have I ever measured between the collector and ground? There's a diode there, which is probably that diode. Okay, oh, yeah, of course, that wouldn't bother us anyway, because we'd had uh, a load on there, and it lit the lamp up, and the power supply wasn't making that awful row to suggest it was under some sort of unpleasant load. So what else have we got around the line drive stage? We have got that capacitor, which is feeding back to our presumably line drive transistor over here. Yeah, okay. So let's just measure that to see if it's gone short.
go to ohms. Many thousands, probably measuring across something else. And something is charging up there. Do I take that out and measure it? I'm not going to at the moment, we might come back to it. Line drive transformer, so where is our emitter? Our emitter's on that, uh, sorry, base. So our base is on this green lead up here. Goes second one in, it's there. R521, and then off to, this transformer is orientated, so this is the secondary. So that should read quite low resistance. I don't suppose that's a problem. Nope. So, have we got something that's holding this on? Which was HT? HT was pin 4, wasn't it? Just go back to the capacitor there. Millions of ohms, hundreds of K. So maybe our transistor is not stuck on. Then this part of the transformer should be fed via the line oscillator. Two transistors there. What's that one doing then? I expected this to be the line drive. Emitter comes in across the transformer there. Where's that one ending up? Oh, that feeds back across there. That's not line drive at all. So is it TR551 and 552? Let's just pop that on diode and have a little poke around there. But this shouldn't be an issue because um, if it was, our transformer would isolate the winding. And of course, they're absolutely fine. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. I wonder actually if we can power the setup with a load on the power supply again, like we did before, um, and just see if the line oscillator starts and runs. Um, will it tell us anything? I'm not sure it will. Unless, of course, our emitter voltage is high for whatever reason. It all looks in such good condition actually, other than that rotten electrolytic we found at the start. That one seems all right. Certainly not got any rotten legs hanging off. Um, the other thing to do is to try and see if we've got any heavy load on one of the line derived supplies from the line output transformer. So, that's pin 8, that eventually ends back up at the HT anyway. Pin 8 of a volt. Oh, that's pin 6, that's our ground. 5, no. 4 is our HT, so we'll be seeing other stuff across there. 3, no. 1 is our collector. Hmm, <sighs> it's a quandary. Why doesn't it work? Is our transformer actually bad? I think we need to load the power supply up. Um, the other thing, of course, could be happening is with the thing on, it could be going into overvolts and shutting down. And maybe it is a power supply fault after all. It could be crowbarring before the line stage ever got to go. Um, so let's just hook that in there if it'll go which it won't, we'll hook it on the bottom. And maybe measure our HT and see if it's happy. Right, that should show us our HT on there. Let's just wind it up and see what happens.
Okay, we can hear it limiting, but it's steady at 109 volts. And I'm quite happy with that. Let's just switch that off. So we have a power supply that is regulating, so that is good news. We never really confirmed that before. We just sort of had a look at the bulb. So I'm wondering if I now have a look at the line drive waveform and um, see if that comes up. So let's, uh, Auto set. You can't see that because I haven't got scope cam connected, have I? Right, there is a line drive waveform there. It's a bit squirrely, but it is there. And it is about 14 kilohertz, so it's not far off the line. Uh, were we DC coupled? No, we weren't. Let me just DC couple and try again. Okay, well, it's swinging around negativeness, so that's okay. Um, so our line drive's all right. Our power supply seems to be happy. What happens next? <laughs> I wonder if we refit the transformer, refit that transistor, and try again. It's entirely possible we could have something like the output transistor just breaking down under load. I'm going to wait for that arrow light to set on the transformer. I think I'm going to refit it, put everything back together and see what happens. Right, back in a bit. Before I refit the line output transformer, there's one thing I ought to do. And I haven't looked into the sort of scanning side of the circuit. I've just been looking at the line derived supplies and the supply to the transformer itself. What happens if we've got a short circuit capacitor in the line output stage itself, you know, around the scan coils? So just looking at the yoke here, um, looks like that red wire and the blue wire, because they've got rubber caps on, are the line and the other two will be the frame. So let me just tug that out. And that's odd because the line is blue and red. You think you put them next to one another, but they haven't done. Um, so let's just have a look. Just to confirm the line output coils, the line scan coils, it should be just a few ohms. There you go, 2.2 ohms. And our frame coils, it should be, well, anywhere between a few tens of ohms and 100 ohms. And we have got 29.2. So that is right. So it's pins one and three on this socket down here are the um, line scan coils. Uh, so let's just have a look at that. Pins one and three. So pins one and three. See, that's that diode we had a dodgy joint on. Let's just recheck that. It's a bit high resistance. I... It's a volt in that direction. This capacitor straight across everything. Oh, as is that, that little electrolytic there. Yeesh. And I also notice there's another electrolytic there. What's that one doing? That is, that's line as well. Did I say pins one and three? No, one, two, yeah, four, one, two, four and five. Let me just confirm, yeah, they're double pins. So one, two, so three and six are the frame. One, two, four and five are the line. So we've got a horizontal width control. Got an inductor there. Feeds into that. No, oh, that'll be the feedback transformer. Alters the power supply slightly, I would imagine. Yeah, it's all isolated between there. Uh, okay. So four and five, that's that one. One and two, we've got that diode that doesn't read quite right. Um, where else does it go? One and two, diode K, which is actually our line output itself. So if that was sort of low to ground, uh, 
Mm. Which it isn't. It's got a diode in the way somewhere. It won't be that diode though. It'll be this one over here. So that's line up. And then this is that's the widthy feedback business. Right, something's just triggered another memory. <laughs> and that's these little diodes. I'll show you the top camera. It's got more resolution. There it is. That's that diode that goes between pins 7 and 8 on our transformer. And that's the resistor that's getting hot that feeds it. Now, I seem to remember these diodes giving a problem breaking down under load. So I've sacked it off. Um, it's a fast recovery 1000 volt thing. Um, and I've put a UF4007 in there, which um, yeah should be uh, ample. So uh, the glue's cured on my transformer, just there. Quite a neat job, I think. Um, so I'm just going to refit, refit that. I'm not holding out a lot of hope, I have to say, because I'm Googling about the place. There was mention of line transformer failure, which would be a bit disappointing, wouldn't it? But um, just for now, we shall pop it back together and um, see what happens, I think. There's nothing else we can do. If the transformer's failed, the transformer's failed. There will be no more Panasonic, but um, there we are. it we're back up together so tube uh, scan coils plugged back in let's see what happens I'm not confident at all so right let's turn it around so the other camera can see there you go uh, mains, 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 mains. We are on on the front. Check, I've got everything plugged back in. Are we on on the front? We are on the front. Right, here goes nothing. No, I don't think that's help. Hang on, we got frame. Oh, that resistor is on fire again. No, it's going to be the output transformer, especially singing like that. I suspect it's got a short in between two turns, uh, hence it passes on our tester. Um, but in reality, of course, it's no good at all. What a great shame. Still, I don't know what to say really. I suppose I've got a bit of salvageable parts and 
probably a good um, 13 or 14 inch tube should I ever need one. So yeah, a bit disappointing really. Another fail video here on Dozzy's Television Workshop. You can't win them all. Anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, do all that rubbish. And uh, let's try and make a success of the next one, shall we? See you all soon. Cheers now. Bye. Disappointing to say the least. Okay, wide angle, we're on wide angle. Uh, for the benefit of the cameras, 21. Right, we're all running uh, Tascam 27. Now, before I do check, um, uh, put the line transformer back in, there's one thing I haven't checked, and that's the actual line output bits itself. Um, so I want to do a few cursory checks around there. We could have a scan capacity, scan capacity coupler. Scan coupling capacity. Oh, let's start again. Before I... 